cocktail we're actually going to do is actually called a whiskey smash. And this is one of my favorites because this is actually my dad's favorite cocktail. So, dad, this one's for you. <laughs> And I also love it because it's a great way of introducing, you know, American whiskey is definitely becoming a big subject. People are getting into it. People are drinking it. Uh, obviously, bullet bourbon being a staple uh, in most people's bar, a staple in most people's bar. Um, but it's a great way of introducing whiskey right. to a consumer or to my, it's good for girls. It's good for guys. It's light. Right. It's refreshing. It's a very easy drinking cocktail. Mm -hmm. And I think it always shocks people. Whenever I make them one, they're like, wow, I didn't know I liked whiskey. Right. As soon as they have that, they're like, wow, this is something I can get behind. And then... They move into the next right. progression, say in Manhattan or an old fashioned. But this um, is perfect for the summer. So we're going to use the same actual principles of what we built the South Side on, but we're just going to twist a couple of different things. So keep that in mind with all of these cocktails of how you can twist it very simply to make it your own, to make it signature, so that you guests feel a lot more welcome with a personal touch from you. So instead of lime juice, we're actually going to use lemon because I, I feel that lemon is uh, a little bit softer citrus. I think it pairs with whiskey a lot better. It does. The bullet and lemon just works so well. But we're actually not going to use lemon juice. We're actually going to use pieces of the lemon because like we talked earlier there's oils in the skin that I really like that give that lemon flavor. Oh, I see there's a question while you cut up the uh, lemon. Do you mind if we answer it? one more question? Yeah, sure. Let's do Absolutely. that. Absolutely. This is uh, Mary from San Francisco. If I wanted to make a cocktail and use a drink dispenser, do I need to change the ratios? No, you, you don't really need to change the ratio. So if you have that spec of that singular cocktail, you, you can just multiply that. The thing I would be careful with is the amount of water. So a standard cocktail, when you shake it, you know, our build was a three ounces on average, and when you shake it, it almost fills up per se like a five ounce glass. So that's about two ounces of water to that cocktail. So you have to do a little bit of math. So if you're doing a batch for say 20 cocktails, you want to be able to add enough water for 20 cocktails. Let me say about 10 to 20 percent water yeah. in your cocktail. Yeah, I mean there's actually a lot of water in your cocktails, almost even more, almost like 20 to 30 depending on, on the style of cocktail. So, so you want to leave that room on the top of using the dispenser, knowing how many ounces it is, using your measuring cups, doing the math by dividing in the amount of ingredients in the cocktail, the mm -hmm. ounces, dividing it into the ounces of the dispenser, and then leaving enough room to add. I always put a couple of cups of ice in there right. just to really get that delicious. Or, or another down. trick is you can just add water, and then for your ice, actually put the ice in a plastic bag to keep it chilled so that while as that, as that ice is melting, you're not adding more water to your batch as well. So that's another little trick as well. Okay. okay, great. So I wanted to show you guys how actually I cut this lemon for this cocktail because again, we're going to be muddling the lemon in this drink and for me there's a specific way we want to cut this citrus. So normally at bars you'll see just wedges that, you, that are garnished on cocktails. We're going to cut this one a little bit this different. We're going to cut this one to what I call quarters or chunks. So I cut the ends off and then I'm actually going to cut it down the equator of the lemon. And then we're just going to basically cut a cross pattern on one side. Yeah, I think it's really important that you have to cut off the nubs because if you leave the nubs on the lemon, it makes it really hard to muddle. So you want to make sure you're getting those ends off. So there we have our, our chunks. You can see the insides. And again, it's just a lot easier to muddle these chunks. So we're going to place all four into our shaker tin, and then we're going to need our sugar. Just like in the south side, we need our sugar to balance it out. Absolutely. And while we're doing this, actually, there's another question. Mm -hmm. Liz from Sag Harbor. Can I serve brown spirits in a highball glass, or do they need to be in a rocks glass? Does the glass matter? I don't know if it matters. It doesn't matter what you drink and how it looks and appears. Like, certain drinks do call for certain type of glassware. So, like, our, what you're going to be doing, the whiskey smash, we would be using the beautiful double fashion glass. Um, for this one, we're going to be using the Schatzwiesel collection. And this mm -hmm. is the double old fashioned from the Schatzwiesel collection. Um, and I think it's the perfect size because you want right. it to be the right size for the amount of ingredients in yeah. the glass. There's a lot of different variables with that. Mostly the size of your glassware so that you don't want to ha have too much room. And, you know, a really large glass, if, if I was, say, drinking a whiskey and soda water, and, you know, this glass is about 10 ounces, and there's, and there's only so much room for soda water. Well, then if I would have gone back to the library glass, which is, has a little bit more ounces, you know, I can fit more soda water, which could, you know, lead to either an over-diluted drink or the proper diluted drink. It's, it's really up to you to decide to make sure that balanced cocktail. But for me, it's more important to have the, the cocktail taste balanced 
than to fill up the glass all the way to the top. True, but I also believe how you drink something, I think it changes what glass you use, actually changes the flavor of something you're drinking. Mm -hmm. Like if you're using not a very nice glass and you make a delicious cocktail, you actually look at it and it doesn't <laughs> feel right, it doesn't look right. Pretty it's like, glasses do definitely lend. They do, they do lend. It's like drinking wine out of the wrong glass. It's just, you know, just a different experience. But mm -hmm. when you drink a cocktail, if you're drinking out of a plastic cup versus a beautiful, mm -hmm double rocks, you know, double fashion rocks glass, it's going to be a different experience. One right. makes you feel like cheap when you're drinking something that's not as high quality, mm -hmm. or that makes me feel like I'm having a great experience. Cool. So we're going to keep moving along, and this is where we're going to bring in our, our other muddler. We want to get the citrus, and we want to get the oils out of the lemon, so we have our muddler with our teeth, and I'm actually really going to get in here to make sure I get all the oils out. I also like to, one rule of thumb for me is when I'm muddling anything, I always like to muddle in my sweet. I don't add in all the rest of the ingredients. So I'll add in, you know, whatever the herb or spice or the fruit is, and I add that in, and then I will muddle within my simple syrup or whatever the sweet ingredient is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's your theory, but that's mine. That is. It gives it something to bond to. If you just muddle the lemons on their own, they're not really bonding with anything else that's going to be liquid into the cocktail. And if you put all the ingredients in and then try to muddle, you're going to have a mess. It's just going to go all over the place. So really it's about that bonding of the uh, simple syrup or the sweet ingredient with the thing you're muddling mm -hmm. and as well as keeping it pretty neat. So we're going to add our mint to the cocktail just like our south side. About six pieces there. And then we're going to go back again and muddle again. Now, this does obviously seem a little labor intensive if you're going to be doing this at home and entertaining for guests. Now, if we were going to be doing this for guests at our house, you know, we would have all, all of our lemons cut already. We'd actually probably have my mint picked and just sitting in water to where I just pick my chunks, my mint, and start muddling and then getting the cocktail out. So it's all, it's all what they say, the mise en place. The mise en place or the prep. The prep. So, so now we're going to be using our whiskey, adding that to our cocktail. We're going to be using an ounce and a half as well. And I love using bullet bourbon for the whiskey smash. I mean, it's just a really amazing bourbon because it is one of the bourbons that is higher in rye content. Mm -hmm. To make bourbon, you have to use at least 51% corn, and then you can use other ingredients like rye or wheat or, right. or barley. And the one thing I love about bullet is it has nice high rye content, giving it all that spice. Mm -hmm. It's also really dry. So even right. though you're adding sugar and other things, it's still going to stand it's out. It's still going to taste like whiskey. I yeah. want my whiskey cocktail to taste like whiskey. I want my whiskey taste. Okay. Me too. So this cocktail is actually going to be served over crushed ice in our double old fashion. So I'm going to ask Elaine Ooh, to, br to work out my to, issues to break, on the to break out, I love break this out part. the big guns. <laughs> so we have what's called uh, a Lewis bag. It's basically just a canvas bag that we're going to put ice inside and then close it up and, and kind of hammer it so that we can actually turn our regular ice into crushed ice. There we go. Ooh, that's a lot of ice. <laughs> I'm making a mess, Ricky. Oh, we got it. So. You can use a shoe bag. A lot of people use bank bags. Just remember to launder them before you put ice in it for your cocktails at home. And I'm going to shake our cocktail. While I bang the ice. While you and make bang the cocktail. If you're mad at anybody, this is a great drink to start off the evening. Or just, you know, any sort of issues. You can just look at them while you're banging them. I'm going to uh, Elaine continue to crush, to crush ice. I enjoyed this a little too much, I think. <laughs> so obviously, this would be something you wouldn't be doing with your guests there, or else they have some issues to work out, that maybe they might want to be the person crushing the ice. So you would make all your crushed ice beforehand. I think it's good. Good to go. Again, we're straining all of our mint out. Can I put the ice in? Absolutely, please do. I'm going to get a little bit more mint for our garnish. Again, for me, more mint the merrier, as always. And we're going to do one little touch to, to our mint which is kind of an ode to my hometown of New Orleans. In New Orleans, there's a famous cafe. I don't know if any of you at home have been to New Orleans, but called Café du Monde, and they serve French donuts, otherwise known as beignets. And the beignets are topped with confectionery sugar. So for this cocktail, 
ode, as an ode to New Orleans, my hometown, and my father at home, I figured I need to garnish this cocktail with a little bit of New Orleans flair for it. I love this part. A little sugar always goes a long way. Uh, I got the biggest sweet tooth on the planet, so <laughs> there's no hint there. A little confectionery sugar right on top of our mint. That is one good looking. Smash. Smash. 